to prove our pets, our pets, having fun with you. You can be your friends, the fun will never end, teaching you to draw and paint. Learning step by step, with simple shapes and styles, sharing art adventures and happy smiles. Climb aboard and let's get started. Welcome to part two of how to paint a T-Rex. Having painted our wash in step one, we now want to add more depth, volume and texture with our colours. Where step one was just simple flat colours, step two will require more lights and darks. I'm going to start on T-Rex. So what we're really concerned with here in step two is to try and build a little bit more depth and texture and volume. Whereas step one was just the simple washes, step two is all about trying to get the general sense of light and dark and the feeling of form or three-dimensionality. So for example, the way in which you can see the lights and the mediums and the darks here on the hindquarters of T-Rex. And it's that that gives you the impression. So when you look, you can see the belly goes out and then there's a deep shadow here between the belly and the hindquarters. And that shows us the, the volume or the, the three-dimensionality that we're seeing. The same, for example, with the shadows inside the mouth or the shadows around the socket of the eye on the nostril even with the background you can see the lights and darks on the mountains here and also on the grass or also on the texture of the ground so step two is about making sure we capture those broad ideas of light and dark and texture which helps create the feeling of reality and depth and volume into the painting itself we're not overly concerned about the absolute details we'll look at those more in step three now where a lot of people might start on the sky I'm going to start on T-Rex. I mentioned before the idea of positive and negative space. So every painting you do breaks into positive or negative space. Each element has a positive or negative space form to it. So um, T-Rex is a positive space. He's the object in this. He's also the focal point. So I'm going to start with him first. And when I'm painting T-Rex, I'm painting him um, from the inside out. So I'm painting from the inside out to the outline. In order to create a greater sense of depth, it's a better technique if we do that first and then when we paint our sky, we paint the sky from the outside in and we go back around the outline of T-Rex a second time from the outside in and that helps to create a much greater feeling of depth on the main object or the, the, the positive objects that you're looking at in um, your paintings. Whether it's T-Rex, whether it's a cup, whether it's a plant, whether it's a person, it really doesn't matter. Now. As I did in step one, I don't want to be too neat and tidy. I want to create a sense of texture. So we're going to go back in with some darks. And I'm going to start once again with my blue. So my cobalt blue. And I'm going to add a little bit of my brown to that. To get a little bit more depth into that space. And we're going to start. And I'm going to actually add a little bit of my green, believe it or not. My uh, thalo green to give a little bit more depth into that. And a little bit more variation in the colour. So those three colours at the moment, I'm going to use those to give a little bit more general sense of darkness here and there. So we'll start where we can see it, and that is in the hind quarters there. You can see that nice bit of darkness. But as I said, what's important to me is to get that feeling of ruggedness and texture. So I'm going to be quite playful and uneven with these spaces. Down around the leg here, down at the foot, down to the toes, you can see all of those darks into those spaces there. And I can leave there's small little bits of light, so I can leave some of the primary colour, the first washy colour I put in to help describe those as we go along. Center of the thighs, there you can see a few heavy shadows down into the space. Now, where these are quite dark, I'm using the color with a little bit less depth this time, just to get a little bit more softness into it. And I'm just scratching in, and again, some more of that shadow down through the center here into those spaces. And it's quite transparent, so it's letting some of the previous color I had come through, which is okay. I like that. Then, some shadowiness, I'm going to just thin out that and use that into this space. 
and you can see stronger pinkish tones coming in which once more we'll touch in in a little while for now i'm just more content to get the general sense of lights and darks and then touch up from those and see where we need to go now i'm going to take a little bit of white to that color add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red and i'm going to come in and just introduce little bits of the slightly pinky tones into those spaces the Again, tapping in to create a little bit of texture, so just, you can see the creases here just a little bit. So it's going to tap in, break up some of those spaces a little bit more with some of that pinky yellow tone. And to give a little bit more depth into my lights without being too neat and tidy. And around the hand, or the arm rather there, little bits. The jaw, which I, I put in a little bit too much darkness on, I'm just going to go back and touch up on that to get that feeling of the light coming in around there. And then underneath here, scratching in. Now, as I said, this is a very complex painting because there's so much into it in terms of the detail and the textures on T-Rex. But equally, there's a lot going on in the background, so you don't have to be too absolute with that. Now, from there, I'm going to go back into my grey. So using my blues, my cobalt blue, and we put in a little bit of cerulean just for fun. Why not? Touch of the burnt umber. And we put in some of these colours and see what they look like. And, you know, you mix up the colours on your palette and they look one way. But oftentimes they can appear slightly different when you put them onto the painting. So you have to sometimes be willing to test your colours. And not expect them to be absolutely perfect. So you can see I'm just going to daub in some of those there. It's a lovely word, daub, isn't it? And I'm aware that my sky is very blue. And because there's a blue sky, that colour has to reflect down on T-Rex and onto the landscape. When you have such a dramatic colour above, it has to reflect coming down. I think um, that was mentioned in the puppy painting of, what was it, Button Slip, Princess Kitten did. And she was talking about the idea, I think, of how the blue sky can reflect down. So if you have any dramatic colours in, they do reflect, and that's important to remember. Again, just up here onto the jaw. Actually, we can make that top of the jaw a little bit brighter. Getting that texture into that space. Back along here you can see there's some nice bright colours in there. And as before, I'm not too concerned if I get exactly the same colours. Because from what I read, scientists are not absolutely sure what T-Rex look like. They, these, all of this in terms of the skin or the textures, these are all what they believe to be the case. But science oftentimes, well, what we know today can oftentimes be changed in the future when we make further discoveries. And I think... Um, they were saying that T-Rex might have feathers, but then some scientists say no, they don't actually, or they didn't actually have. So we only can go with what we think is the correct thing. It doesn't mean to say it is absolutely that. So that gives us plenty of opportunity to be a little bit more playful and decide what we'd like to have in our version of T-Rex. Just getting a little bit more colour variation into these spaces. So all I'm trying to do is just create a little bit more drama with my subtle colours. Now, there is actually a touch of brighter pink you can see just inside here on the loose skin that helps to stretch out the jaw when T-Rex opens its mouth. It's slightly brighter, so it's going to touch on that there. And I'm going to give a little bit more depth using the white and the yellow to mix up a slightly peachy tone. Just give a little bit more depth to the colours underneath there. Again, I'm still ignoring the teeth. I intend to add those in, but not until the next stage, because I feel I still got to do the sky, etc. And you can see the way the teeth are quite small and fiddly. And if I put them in too soon, it would just be very awkward to try and get around them. So some details are best left to towards the end of your painting, just because it's easier to do that. There's a little bit of shadow just inside here that I need to do a little bit more of, just along there. Now what I think I will do is take a break from T-Rex for a while, let all of that dry, and I'll start just putting in a few loose colours into my background. So while I have these, once again, haven't yet washed the brush, adding a bit of yellow, you can see there's some lights and darks on the mountain. So I'm going to just start describing. What those lights and darks are describing is the texture on the mountain in the background. Now, this is all very uneven, and I don't need to be exactly the same as that unevenness, so I can create my own sense of textures and unevenness on the mountains. And that's all I'm going to try and do. So just putting in some of these into that space and then across here. The mountains look blue and we know 
mountains are not blue. It's just the mountains are very far away and the, the distance between us, the viewer, and the mountain makes them appear blue. Or, and that's the atmospheric conditions that make them appear distant because there's a lot of air between us and them. And so the distance is conveyed through that feeling of the air and the dust in the air. And all of these little factors influence how we see things. So the idea that the mountains in the background are further away is called, the colour being softer is called tonal perspective. So the blue, the fact that the blue is called tonal perspective and the fact that they're much smaller, that's linear perspective. So we know the mountains are much larger and if we were to walk close to them, they would seem much larger than we are. But because they're further away, they look smaller and so that's tonal perspective, or sorry, linear perspective. Now into the landscape, same idea, just kind of throw in a few broken colours here and there. <laughs> cannot see it but just to my left outside the cockpit window there is a little bird who is outside the window of the playroom and he's tapping on the window it's as if he knew I were here it's very funny you might hear him in the background if I stay quiet for a moment hmm he's just tapping on the window I think he's seeing his reflection and he's tapping at what he thinks is a rival in the window in his reflection that's very funny just breaking through here you can see there's been those nice textures there. Now from there, I am now for the first time going to wash my brush and I'm going to go back in and I'm going to put in a little bit more weight into my sky and I'm going to start with those pinks that sit at the lower parts. You can see these lovely pinky clouds. It gives a lovely warmth to it. So once more, I'll start with my white. I'll add a touch of red to that. Give me that sort of colouring there. And I'm going to add a small touch of yellow just to warm it up a little into that space and a touch more red. Now let me just test that colour and see what that looks like. I like that. Um, I think maybe actually I'll go a little bit darker and I'll add a small touch of blue to it. So we'll add a touch of the cerulean blue with the cadmium red and the yellow into that and see what that. A little bit softer, yeah. I think we'll go with that for the moment and see what that looks like. And just around the jaw, around the shoulder. I'm going to put more red again. Very loosely because this is just soft misty clouds at the base of the sky. Then I'm going to take my cerulean blue and a little bit of my cobalt blue and I'm going to use that in the top section. That's too dark. Add some white to that. Touch more cerulean and add cobalt, I think, just to get a little bit more depth into my sky. Yeah, I prefer that colour. Again, with a certain degree of freedom. Okay, remember this is step two, so I happen to be a little too light or too dark. Not a problem, I can touch it up again at a later stage. Just block that in there. A little bit of white from the previous stage going through, just take that out. And the same over here, just behind these plants. Bits of foliage up to the edge of the tail. And just blending that in. You can see the acrylics dry so quickly that it almost dry at this stage. Would you believe that? Even as I'm blending it in, I can feel the acrylics dry because the paper I'm using, it's a heavy paper, so like a light card, it absorbs very quickly the moisture out. So what I'm going to do is very quickly blend a little bit of my light back into that again. And I think when I'm doing stage 2 I probably will come back in and add a little bit more variation into that sky, a little bit more softness, but because I've got more depth in it at this stage it will be easier in step 3 to just add in that little bit of blending and variation into what we have. Now, I'm going to take some of the greens and once again layer up a little bit more depth into those. So I'm going to start with some yellow and a little bit of bright green and I want something quite vibrant and quite lively. So I'm going to use that just down here around the sky and the plants that are coming down from this section. Or the foliage, I should say, or the leaves, whatever you should call them. Just shaping those up a little bit more. And finishing behind, just putting in little bits behind the photograph. Then I'm going to take the same and a touch more green and I'm going to use that down into this space. Now my phthalo green to that for these ones. And now my blue over here on the right hand side. 
I decided just before I finish up on step two that I would like to give a little bit more strength to my dark. So I got out a little bit of black because I actually don't have a darker brown than that one there at the moment. So I'm going to use my black with my brown and my blue and red to give myself a little bit more depth. So I'm using a slightly smaller brush. I'm going to take some of that black. I'm going to add to it. Just move this up so you can see it. Can you see that there? Yes, you can. So I'm going to take some of that, add to it some of the brown and the blue. As I said before, I don't like black on its own. It's a bit too heavy. But when I mix it with these, it gives just a little bit more variation into the colour, so it's not quite as flat a colour. So touching the touches of red, blue and the brown just to give my black a little bit more interest. And I'm going to use that, as you can see, in some of these spaces. I don't have too much paint on the brush, just to give a little bit more strength. Uh, you can see there's a lot more depth in that colour, and that will help just give a more weight. So I'm using this as a a sort of layered darkness and I'm coming in now with a little bit more strength into that some of these shadows have a little bit more weight by comparison shaping up the toes there again in between the toes there in that space you see with some of those darks moving up just tapping in to get that sense of creasing on the skin there and then down in between these areas and if I flatten my brush like a blade I can just come across and just put in some of those simple little creases that we see there those cut overs and the same onto this side and then they come back up there. Again, at the underside of this leg, you can see some of that weighty darkness there. And as before, if this dark that I'm using is too dark, I can tone it down. I'd rather be too dark than too like a little bit more depth and then soften it back into the light. Shaping the claws, goodness me, the size of those claws. Terrifying, uh, just into those spaces there. And it comes out here. Just tapping out up, let it graduate very gently. Just on the underside of the belly here, there's a little bit of that darkness. And again, I'm just going to dry off my brush, just scrape some of the colour off my brush a little, and just drag that down using a dry brush. Remember, we talked about a dry brushing before, we have very little colour on the brush. as a form of graduation and a form of blending. Just bringing that down a little on the top of the arm there, into that space. You can see into the claws there, two very pointed claws in there, into that area there. Just on the underside of the neck, there, just scratching in some of that. Of course, around the eye socket, so I'm going to give a little bit more depth to that. Just the shaping of that. Now, add the lights in to get the pressure of the staring eye later on. You can see the light up here at the top of the eye, which we'll add in later on. Then for the nostril, there. And the inside, you can see here, just on the underside of the tongue, there's a lot of darkness just in there blend it out so shape it up and then we just blend it out same with the stretchy this is you can see the skin here that stretches on this side that's it on the opposite side and it's dark because it's on the inside that we're looking at it in there that shadow comes down around here and then up around the teeth you can see the jaw the shapings in that so it comes out on its own even some of the lines around the teeth you can see the way the teeth continue on up into the jaw you can see where the roots of the teeth are there so we put some of that darkness up into that space to show that. Um, where else? Oh, just along the back, we might have little bits here and there, and also into these spaces. Just the hindquarters there, just the space between the thighs and the belly, and also here. That's quite a heavy colour, but as I said, I'm quite happy to put that in there and soften it down later on when we need it. It just gives a little bit more strength and drama into T-Rex. From there, the stones have a little bit of darkness, and I'm going to put a little bit more blue in those there, so they're not too weighty. So just put a little bit in, even more again. Just to soften that down, maybe partly allow that to graduate into the shadows there, and the same here into those spaces. There are a couple of dark crevice areas across these spaces here. So move my half face slightly across you can see just there and just hit and miss don't have to be too perfect with it shape those up a bit now a little bit of softening back here and the shadow at the base of the tail just there it's slightly Lighter on the underside, you can see here it seems slightly lighter, but again, the reflection from the landscape below, so the ground being lighter reflects a little into that space. And the 
bone structure. You see the lumps and bumps that we see along here? There. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my slightly rougher brush and I'm going to come back in with little bits of that. And what I'm going to do is just use the stippling effect of the brush just to create a little bit of texture on the body. So I've got very little colour and I'm just very gently tapping with it. So what I'm actually doing is just tapping in with it so that I'm getting just a little bit more freedom with the idea of just stippling in. Just tapping in around those shadow areas there. So the browns and the blacks. And it just helps to build that bit of texture. Now I'm going back to my small brush. And I'm going to just put in some of these little crease marks that we see here and here. So some of these crease marks. Once again, using that bright, same bright colour we've been using, the bright pinky colour. You can see across these spaces one or two little marks there. And thread. So we'll put in the ones that we see here, here, along there, some in the back, and occasionally along the, the jaw. So we'll put in any of those that we see those crease marks. Just there. Now I'm just adding in little dots, just again to help create the texture. So you can see these dotted textures you see here and there. So I'm just going to tap those in using the point of the brush, the bright colour. All of it is said with the intention of building a sense of the weighty uneven texture on the surface of the skin of T-Rex. I'm going to take some of these lights and just bring them across into my landscape here and there. As you can see I've spent a bit of time just texturizing all of the surface there with touches of my light greys, my medium greys and my dark greys and it's very it's very much worth the time to get that sense of texture because it gives a much more realistic and almost tactile quality to the surface of T-Rex. So I'm going to leave that now uh, for the second stage of T-Rex and just do a little bit more on my plants and on my background so I'm going back into my medium sized brush and I'm going to just add, you can see we use some outlines here on the greenery to give a little bit more depth so I'm going to come in with my tail of green Add a little bit of water just for fluidity and a touch of red, I think, just for a little bit of flower. And I'm going to just impart, add little shadow lines to give a little bit more strength and suggestion of individualism to these spaces. And as I said before, you can be quite playful here. We don't need to be too neat and tidy because with something like this you can add in extra colours or extra shapes or forms or whatever you wish to do. So this just gives a little bit more depth and reality to what we're looking at and a little bit more playfulness to the textures. Uh, the greens. There. Now we'll use, I think, more of a bluey green or bluey grey in the plant in the middle just to break up the greens, create something a little bit more different and a little bit more unusual. Just there. And you can see the veins coming through, we can add those in later on, but we do have more lights put in at some point and we'll do that in the next stage, I think. So for now, we concentrate on just getting a little bit more shape into the more so than anything else. Just adding a few more touches there. A variation into that space. And then over onto these ones, the same idea where it's just a little bit more cut in. So just using the blade of the brush, just coming in just to get that sense of serration on them like so. Now these outlines are very dark and I will soften those in the next stage, I think. But for now, I just want to get a little bit more drama and playfulness. The little birdie is back at the window outside my cockpit. And I can hear him. He's anxious to get in, but I don't think I can allow him to come in. That's very funny. Maybe he wants to paint. Maybe he wants to come in and paint with us. Just like so. And then on the top, we'll keep this a little bit softer because it's down along the sky, so we don't want to be too heavy-handed with that. So once again, just coming in and putting in suggestions of details. And as I said, these will look much more dramatic when I add some lights to them, but we'll do that in the next stage. Just here and there to give a sense of individuality to the leaves. To those spaces. And the bluey grey, as you can see, is somewhat softer than the darks in these spaces, which we may well thin out anyhow the next stage and one or two shadows in between those spaces and I want to go back in and just you can see there's a little bit more color a little bit more distance a little bit more softness or subtlety into the colors on the mountains behind these lights so what I'm going to do is again keep the same color mix it with some white take the cerulean blue that we talked about earlier on that is a little bit more drama and just let's see what this does when we put that in. It has a slightly more sullen slightly grayish tone and I'm happy to use that here and there to give a little bit more variation into those spaces. I'm going to let some of these colours just come down, tap them in here onto the ground. Get a little bit more unevenness into that space as well. Just here and there. You could even bring little bits onto the plants just for feeling of light. 
reflection there just needs these spaces and I think we're just about there with, uh, when it comes to step two I don't think we'll do too much more than this I think we've more than enough text and more than enough drama built in at this point and we can come back in then in the following stage in stage three step three and that's when we'll finish out all these other fiddly details just want to how I might put a little bit there and there you go. That's step two on how to paint a T-Rex complete. And I'll be back with step three to show you how to finish your painting of T-Rex. Have lots of fun and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye.